Hi everyone, I wanted to hop on here and do a quick video update um, with where I'm at in the process of actually signing on and committing to a surgeon and um, flights. So basically I had set my mind on going to see Dr. Alvarez. He uh, He's in the clinic Endo Bariatrics um, just across the border from Texas. I was really impressed with... Um, his personality, bedside manner, um, very involved in his client's process, had great videos, information out there um, about um, any kind of question you might have with uh, VSG surgery, the gastric sleeve. He is, uh, he only does gastric sleeve. He doesn't take on very many clients. So I believe he's around the four clients a day range. He, um, so I liked all of his, all, everything I read about him made me feel really comfortable with that decision, even though it's kind of on the upper end of price range for going to Mexico. Um, he charges 8,000. Um, so I kind of had set my sight, oops, sorry. I kind of set my sight on him. Um, the flights from where I'm at, the state I'm in, are a little more expensive. They were going to be about $650 for me and my husband round trip, which isn't terrible, but um, it still adds to the cost. And um, and then there was a two-hour, I think about a two-hour drive from San Antonio to the actual location. So, yes, he is just across the border, but, um, but it's still a two-hour drive. So, um, from what I've read, the drive wasn't terrible. Um, it was totally worth it for people, but just kind of some considerations that I had in my head. So as, as I was kind of trying to weed through the information and make my decision, my husband was looking at some uh, clinics in Tijuana and kept like mentioning, Oh, what about this clinic and pricing and that. So I had kind of looked at those, but had liked Dr. Alvarez so much that I wasn't really interested. Plus, I will say that reading up on how many clinics there are in Tijuana, how many doctors there are, um, all the options can get a little overwhelming. And on top of that, whenever you look up surgery in Mexico, um, you're going to see videos and news articles about people getting the super bug that's been going around there. Um, that is mostly antibiotic resistant. Um, there's also some stories out there of women who have gotten botched surgeries. I know of, um, one who went into a coma, um, and was, did not survive her surgery, whether that was due to the surgery or complications afterwards. I'm not sure. Um, so a lot of like the news articles, of course, it's sensationalized, but I do think that there, I mean, it's a big decision. You're going to another country to get surgery, a pretty, uh, a pretty big surgery. They're removing part of your organ, they're removing your stomach or they're bypassing your organ, they're moving organs around. Um, and so it's not something to, I, I don't know, I'm trying to balance not just feeding into all that fear and what the media puts out there. Um, and maybe then also looking at, um, like realistically where it would to be where with. Now I will say that when I researched these articles and these stories, it seemed like they all went back to one doctor. And if you know, if you've read these stories, you know, that doctor, <laughs> um, so if you see these stories and they keep coming up, that is a big indicator to not go to that doctor. So, um, so anyways, uh, yeah, so the super bug, um, they did locate it and, um, found it in at least one hospital, possibly two hospitals. So it was important for me to ask, um, the clinic if, if worst case scenario happens, and like, I need a blood transfusion or I need, you know, a specialist, that kind of thing. Like worst case scenario, what is your plan of action? If that clinic doesn't seem like they know very well, like they're not able to give you that answer pretty quickly, if they don't feel confident in their answer, 
or if they don't give you any answer at all, that's a red flag for me. So, um, anyway, so I started to warm up to the idea about going to Tijuana when I started looking more into those Facebook groups and finding the people who had good, good outcomes and, um, were saying good things about that. Now I will say that there are doctors that I looked into that had one or two bad reviews um, where the client either had to see a professional shortly after their surgery. So they had to get care here in the U S um, and people were raving and defending that doctor. So anywhere you go, you're going to have bad outcomes, whether it's the, the hospital's fault, the hospital staff who maybe introduced an infection, um, whether that's the, the surgeon's fault, you know, who knows, but investigate it. Like, don't just go off of good reviews because like it almost, I don't know, I'm going to try to not offend people, but it almost feels like there's almost kind of like a cult following where you absolutely love this doctor and you will defend him to the death, you know? So, and I get that, like some of these doctors have tremendously change these people's lives, but take, take what they're saying, you know, the good things that they're saying, the good reviews, because they probably did have an amazing experience in the surgery work for them. But then if there are also clients who were saying they didn't have such a great experience, listen to that too, and kind of make a, uh, informed decision. That's kind of how I'm going about it. Um, so, um, so then I started feeling a little better about Tijuana because then I started seeing that a lot of these botched surgeries, these really poor outcomes, a lot of the negative stuff that was coming out of Tijuana, a lot of that was linked back to one doctor particularly and one hospital particularly. And hospitals here in the U.S. have infection issues. I know of a few people who almost lost their lives due to um, resistant bacteria that was introduced there at the hospital. It happens. You know, when you're in, when you're in a hospital with other sick people and it just, it happens. So to me too, it was important. I don't want to be in a hospital, um, because I don't want to be exposed to those other bacteria and germs that, um, that there are, there's a reason why we have hospitals It's for sick people who need help. Right. Um, and so for me, I'm not sick. I'm going in for, um, a surgery that will help me prevent diseases down the line. Um, but I want to go to a specialized clinic that, that has the resources to take care of me if that worst case scenario was to happen. Um, so blood, um, specialist doctors, I want to make sure that I'm not just a number that's in a, an assembly line and just getting pushed through the system as quickly as possible to make as much money as possible. Those clinics that were offering lower prices, I guess it's hard for me to wrap my head around how they're even affording to, and I'm talking about the clients that are advertising two, three thousand dollar surgeries. From what I've looked up, um, are they paying? Are they paying those their employees well? Um, employees that aren't paid well, they're not going to do as good of a job, and and they're not going to be able to hold on to those good employees because more clients means more work means more like hurry up, get that surgery room cleaned because we got to get the next one in because otherwise you're not making money. Um, the other options too, is that you may not be getting some of those, you may not be getting a nicer hotel. You may not be getting, um, a nicer clinic. Um, doesn't mean that that clinic and that hotel's not still great. Um, and so I kind of saw that some of these clinics that were charging a little more than 2000, they were charging three or four. They had great outcomes. They had great services. They were, they seemed like they were good doctors. You're just not getting like the five-star hotel or, you know, the new clinic type experience. And so for some people, that's totally fine. Um, for me, it was helpful to watch videos and pictures of people because you'll see pictures online, but then you see the videos that people take of what's real and it's going to look a little different because you know like it's like what looking at a hotel room a lot of times their hotel rooms look amazing and then you show up in person and you're like oh wow this is not what the pictures look like um doesn't mean it's not a good hotel still it's just 
So for instance, I saw a, a picture of, of a clinic and I was like, oh wow, this is a really nice looking clinic and the rooms looked big and they looked nice and updated. And then when I saw a video about somebody actually in that room in recovery, they were in this nice room, but the picture was taken, the video, the picture they had taken was from the door when they advertised. And then when the person actually took the video of their experience in the hospital room, there was a curtain. So it was like two or three patients in that room and they pulled a curtain along the side. Um, the, the care that they got from what it looked like was great. The person helping with them was really kind and they had great bedside service, you know, so um, probably a great experience for most people. For me, however, <sighs> I mean, I, I love people, but when I'm in surgery, when I'm going through something, I want to be able to go into my room, shut the door, have room for my husband to be able to lay down or sit or whatever and have some privacy. I'm not, I'm not the kind of person where I want to be shoved in a room with two other people and have a curtain right next to my bed. That makes me feel claustrophobic. So for me, that was good to see and to know that this, that had I gone in with that, 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 um, idea that my room was going to be big and private and then got there and realized no you're stuck in this room and there's this curtain right next to your bed and there's other people there talking and uh, I, yeah I would have been like oh this is not what I signed up for so good good to see that and I wish there were more pictures and videos out there with the clients I didn't find a whole lot it was hard to find them so um so I think it's great that people are are um, posting their videos and that so very helpful for me anyways um so basically yeah I don't really know where I'm going anymore because I found a doctor in Tijuana that I really like he's a little bit less than Dr. Alvarez he's got um a great website great information um great services so I'm gonna do another video where I talk about my decision on either Alvarez or this new doctor that I found. I'll give information, pros and cons of both, kind of where I'm at with my process. And hopefully by then I will have made up a decision of what I am doing, who I'm going with. So um, I will be calling this doctor and asking questions, follow up with me, and, um, and then you can find out more information about these two doctors.